Hi there, and welcome to the sixth installment of The Truth Is Out There. This week we're going to be talking about OER. Um, so this is a guide that we've created about um, open educational resources. Um, so if you go to this guide, um, you can see that there's tabs on the left-hand side that give you information about open educational resources. So we're going to just go ahead and click on that first one here to get more, some, more information about it. So what is OER? So OER stands for Open Educational Resources, but what does this mean? Essentially, these are high quality teaching, learning, and research materials that are free for people everywhere to use and repurpose. But why does this matter? Especially if you're a student or if you're a faculty member, what does this mean? What this means is that resources are expensive. So if you're a student, you know that you're spending a lot of money on textbooks and course materials for your classes. But there are, there are um, resources out there that are entirely free to use um, that you may be unaware of. Um, and not only that, but it's free to distribute to others. So this is important when it comes to faculty members is that there's content for you that you can put in a syllabus and give to your students without worry of copyright infringement um, or worrying about you know if you can change that content at all to fit more to your class. OER materials give you um, that privilege. Um, and so today we just kind of want to talk about the importance of spreading awareness of OER content and why it's important for faculty to really get on board on using open educational resources in their classes. Um, so some information about how you can help. Um, become an OER advocate, whether you're a student, faculty member, or just a regular person um, outside of the university, you can help um, advocate for these tools. Um, so. You know, for instance, um, Ontario's Undergraduate Student Alliance, they actually created their own OER campaign called Textbook Broke. And um, they started a hashtag on Twitter that you could follow and basically post information about how much money you're spending on textbooks every semester and what you could be using that money for instead. So especially with undergraduates who maybe don't have a job yet, um, you could be spending that money on rent, you could be spending um, that money on food, um, clothing, anything, but um, you're having to spend it on textbooks that you may or may not even use, um, which is why it's important for education, open educational resources to get out there and be put in syllabus um, so that students don't have to be spending that money and they can be putting it uh, elsewhere. Um, so there's also a link I've included about how to be an OER advocate, and it's a nice student toolkit that gives you more information. And of course, it's totally free because it's an OER material. And you can download this book and get more information about how to become an advocate. So if you scroll up here on the left hand side, I have a tab called textbooks. So this I have provided all the different uh, databases and different websites that provide open textbooks for students. So if you read the description, you can actually get more information about the subject matter of these textbooks and uh, more information about um, how you can use them in a class, for instance. So we have uh, the American Institute of Mathematics. Um, this is a website that gives you information on mathematic textbooks that if you are in a class, you might be able to use, um, or you can just use it on your own time. Um, and you can see the different subject matters there. Uh, then we have some other ones as well, like Open Textbook Library. This is going to give you a wide variety of different kinds of textbooks um, and how you can use them. They're totally open licensed, so um, they're free for you to download and um, free to distribute. And you can click and get information about um, the textbooks they offer. Um, so if you scroll down, I have some more information about textbooks and spending. Um, so this graph here gives you information about how much undergraduate students were spending on textbooks in the U.S. in the spring of 2016. Luckily, the number has, um, I think, gone down in the last couple of years. But either way, we still see that students are spending hundreds of dollars on textbooks, depending on um, the type of um, material it is. So even if it's an e-textbook, we still have students spending over $100 on that book, which is a lot of money. Um, but if we encouraged faculty to actually use open educational resources, um, students wouldn't have to be spending that money. Um, and then there's information about other course materials. So um, yes, students are spending money on textbooks, but what else are they spending money on? Um, and again, you can see that hundreds and hundreds of dollars that students um, could be putting elsewhere, they have to be um, putting in the materials they need to buy for a class. So if we scroll up um, on the left hand side, I've also included information about beyond the book. So yes, while it's important to find information 
about um, how to use textbooks and how to get free textbooks. There are also OER materials for other things. So courses, for instance, um, if you are a faculty member um, or if you are a student or just you know anyone outside of the university, um, there are courses available for you to take that are free and available at any given time. So if you want to uh, learn a new trait or learn a new skill, this is all available for you. Um, or again, if you are a professor um, and you want to teach your students a certain course um, or certain content, you can actually find um, these OER websites that give you information about their courses and have your students uh, participate in them. Um, so most of these are free to download and even edit. So if you are a faculty member and you like a course, but some of the content you'd like to see change, you can edit that content and then share it for, with your class um, without any copyright infringement issues. There's also some other um, types of OER. So there's images and multimedia. So you can use websites like Creative Commons to actually search for images. So uh, that's one big deal that a lot of students deal with is um, trying to use images for a presentation, for instance, and you can't use it because of copyright. So you can actually search for an image here um, and you can use it in um, a class, for instance, uh, with no issues. So any of these um, images that come up here, you can see, um, you can select what type of purpose you want to use the image for and the licensing on it. So you want to make sure that it's public domain. Um, that's a good one as well. But each of these licensing is going to give you um, different options, right? So let's go back and go back to our guide. There's also multimedia as well. So one thing um, you may not know is that there's also OER music um, that you can actually freely stream and download. So if that second one down, um, this website's gonna actually show you on the left-hand side um, music that's free to download, um, but then also music that you can, um, let me go back to that, music that you can actually use um, commercially as well. So if you want to use music for a video, for instance, um, or even background music for a venue, you can do so through this website. Um, and then of course, there's a couple others there as well. Scrolling up, I also have a tab about copyright. So um, again, talking about licensing, um, a lot of people don't often look at copyright or think about why it's important. But copyright, um, if you're infringing upon copyright, you're breaking the law. Um, if you're using something um, that has licensing on it um, that's telling you you cannot use it or cannot distribute it, whether it's showing a film in class or um, editing or photoshopping um, someone's private image, you are um, breaking copyright laws. And this image here just gives you information about what these different uh, words and letters mean um, when you're looking at licensing and how you can tell what is most free to use and what's least free to use. Some other information um, I thought was interesting is that Google's actually one of the largest platforms that deals with copyright issues um, because they are seeing a, a huge influx of copyright removal requests. So a lot of the content that is in Google um, is breaking copyright law and they have to remove it or else um, you know they're breaking the law. So if you scroll up, you can actually see a final tab um, about additional resources. So I've just included other OER links um, that can take you elsewhere to get more information um, and to find other content. I've also included an, uh, a video at the bottom that will give you more information about open educational resources if um, today wasn't enough for you. Um, but just know that open educational resources can be used for a multitude of things, whether you're a student or a faculty member um, or you work for a business, um, this information is always out for you and it's free. You don't have to pay for everything because um, you, if you look elsewhere, you can actually find content that's available um, with no, repercussion, no repercussions. So um, I hope today has helped you um, get more information about OER materials, whether or not you've heard of them before. Um, but just remember, be an advocate for open educational resources and really push um, your professors to start including it in their assignments and in their classes um, so that students don't have to suffer with those horrible textbook prices that we all know that we've had to deal with. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed today and learned um, some of the truth that's out there and um, stick around for next week um, as we'll be doing another installment of The Truth Is Out There as we are every Wednesday. So have a great day.